First, open up your Windows 2012 machine and go to PowerShell and type sysdm, which stands for the System Control Panel. .cpl is what the control panel comes from. Go to Computer Name, click Change. I'm typing in Data Stage here, and then under More, I'm typing ibm.com, and I'm clicking OK, and then it will ask us to reboot. Go ahead and do that. Then open up your media folder, wherever you downloaded the application. And I'm going to create a folder called media on my local hard drive and copy this over. This is the unzipped version. Now turn off your firewall. I'm opening up PowerShell. I'm going to type in firewall.cpl. And then I'll go to turn the firewall off or on. You don't have to turn this off, but for demoing purposes, I'm going to turn it off also for simplicity. You may also want to install 7-Zip, which I'm doing right now, and also Firefox if you like. Notepad++ is always a great idea. Okay, my copy has finished, and now go into that file and that folder. And then notice we have a bundle here that includes the licensing information. And then I also have the IS suite. So let's open that up. We'll go down to setup. The setup program will automatically create this HTTPS URL. So I'm going to go here, go to properties, make sure quick edit is turned on. If it's not, turn it on. And that way you can press enter, which will s copy it to the clipboard. So you can paste it here. Of course, it's already here, but uh, it's useful in other scenarios to copy and paste that way. So I'm going to click Next, and then click Next, and make sure all these pass. They do. And click Next, and Next. New installation, and I'm going to select all of these. This is great because the client piece that we need will reside on the same server, which is what we want. And of course we want data stage. If you have a license for quality stage, go ahead and check that too. On the license screen, you'll see mention of quality stage, both the director and the administrator. Click on next, and then type in a password for the SRD user, and click on next. We are not using clustering. We'll keep this very simple. Go next, and we're going to click next. Password. Just going to use the same password for all of these, and we'll keep the usernames and passwords as they are listed here. Type in my password here. I'm going to use the same password for all of these. You should be getting these success messages explaining that the user account has been created. We're going to deal more with the user accounts soon, but for now, just keep an eye on what their names are, because these will come back over and over again. And we're going to do the full WebSphere application server rather than Liberty, which is uh, Liberty is more of a lightweight version of the full WebSphere application server, of course. And we're using the network deployment, which is uh, is, is licensed in our scenario. Okay, we'll keep all those ports the same. Click Next. No surprise here. Now, WAS admin is, in, is important because that is our administrative account to control uh, WebSphere application server. IS admin is the information server admin. That's also a very important account. Click Next. DS admin, that is for your data stage administration. Okay, we'll leave install globalization support checked. We'll leave that unchecked for the MQ plugin. We'll keep these defaults as they are. Click Next. Here we're going to use the data stage, uh, InfoSphere data stage, to do parallel and server jobs, although in our case we'll do mostly server jobs, in fact. Click Next. And enter a password here for the, the data stage ODB database. And then make sure all of these pass. Fix any errors that you have. 
for example, mine failed because this VM only has two gigs of RAM and it needs to have four. So fix any issues you have and check again or rerun the installer. Okay, so I reran my installer. This time it's passed all the way through and click next. Okay, that will bring you here. I recommend that you copy and paste this because the very next thing you want to do is load the launch pad. So let's do that. Copy and paste. We'll need to accept the certificates. You should do exactly the same thing with Internet Explorer. With one slight adjustment, which is to go here, view certificates, install certificates, go to the local machine, really what we did before, but there is one difference. You need to go to the certification path and do exactly the same thing to the parent. Local machine, place all the certificates in the store, and now you can close Internet Explorer, open it back up, and this time you shouldn't get any error messages about certificates. And certification path, certificates, okay. Okay, close Internet Explorer, go back to Firefox, go to the Operations Console, and you are going to log in as was admin. And you're going to get an error message that we need to fix. The full instructions to do that are listed here. Click OK, go to Support and Information, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, but I'm going to show you the faster way. So the first step is try to log in with the designer. So let's try it. Click the drop down, and type in your current username and password, the one that you're logged into the computer with right now. That's really important. We're going to see that in a second. This should give you an error message, this or clicking login, and that's because we need to create an account on WAS, the Web Server Application Server. And that account needs to match the current account you're logged into. So to do that, let's go into the Administration Console, and we go to Administration, and then we go to Users and Groups, Users. We're going to create a new user and it has to match the one you're logged into the computer with right now with exactly the same password. We're also going to give this person, this account, suite components listed there. Click Save and Close. Okay, let's try again. Click on Close and I'm going to hit the down arrow. And this time it, uh, it populated. But look, we still get an error message. And that's because we need to do what's called a mapping. So to do that, go back to the screen. We're going to click on Domain Management, Engine creden Credentials. Click here. I'm going to make this larger so you can read this better. Click Open Configuration, and now type in DS for Data Stage, ADM, and then type in the same username and password that you used when you installed the system. Click on Save and Close, and try again. That will take you here, but we're still going to have a problem when we try to log in here. To fix that, open up PowerShell, type in this, explore, and open up DSODB repo, and its registration properties file. We're going to open this in Notepad++, which is listed here. Scroll down to the bottom, and we need a password here. And specifically, we need it for this username, which we created when we installed Data Stage. So go back to PowerShell and enter this command, which is the encryption program. That will you give it your password, and that will output a string that you need to put in that file. Okay, so I've got mine. I'm going to paste it right here. Okay, now save the file. And if we try to reload this page, we're actually going to get another error message. I'm going to show you what that looks like, just so you can see it. It's pretty much what we saw before. So now, let's go back to PowerShell, 
and we're going to type in this command explore so we can open up the configuration for the DSODB and here's the problem we need to turn it on right now it's on off so we need to turn it to 1 to turn on okay and then you save that file if you tried it again you're gonna get another error message but we're making progress because now it tells, says we need to turn on the app watcher so to do that open PowerShell and go net start IBM APW serve that'll turn it on okay and now we can try it again And sure enough, there we go, we've got everything okay. Okay, you're in the home stretch. Now, you need to install Visual Studio 2012, some version. I'm using Express because it's free. Then after the installation of that, you need to uninstall Visual C++ 2012 because data stage is incompatible with Visual C++ 2012 and instead you need to install Visual C++ 2010. The links to do all of that are below the video. Just click on the download and follow the instructions on the screen. Here's the 64-bit package of C++ 2010 and here's the 32-bit. This page explains that essentially you just need the 32-bit version. You don't need to run through these instructions but there's the 32-bit requirement and then here is a bit more information showing C++ 2010 along with Visual Studio 2012. Here's Visual C++. Once that's done, restart. Okay, then download the C++ 2010. That looks like this. Double click. Run it. Accept the terms. And finish. Open PowerShell. Type appwiz.cpl, filter the list down for C++, and confirm that it says only C++ 2010. At this point, you have installed InfoSphere, DataStage, and you've got the monitoring system up and running. Side by side, you can see you have now installed and configured the system for doing some data imports.